We're, we're on the lookout Good for morning. a motorhome yeah. with Where two fugitives <laughs> and a pile of paperwork with potentially corrupt accounts in the background. Is that what we're looking for here? Oh, it's it's been a fun. In some ways, it's been a fun uh, twenty four hours for sure. I, I mean, for those of us in Scotland th who had Nicola Sturgeon's card map from the beginning, uh, you know, a dozen years ago, it, it, it has been a joy to watch. Uh, I mean, many of us, myself included, have been saying for years that the SNP is a bunch of clowns. And yesterday was the moment when finally the clown car pulled up and the doors fell off and the wheels <laughs> fell off and the horn went wah wah. Uh, so it was that was terrific. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, the, tra we live here. I mean, it must. I'm sure it is very funny for people watching this and you know, and, and seeing this ridiculousness play out. But the, the, it's a pyrrhic moment in the sense that the SNP have had more than long enough to wreck Scotland. A, a, a reckoning for the SNP, if, if it is a reckoning for the SNP, it's come too late. The damage has been done in every sphere. Mm -hmm. It will be generations in the fixing. Uh, the SNP have sown nothing but division up here, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and the consequences are writ large for the people of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Neil, when you look back at the press conference where she was her usual smooth uh, self, she was, she's an excellent communicator saying there wasn't anything left in the tank, a lot of us, incl you included, I'm sure, were very sceptical and thought there's more to this than meets the eye. We knew this police investigation was going on in the background. She basically took of Scottish people for mugs, because that's really why she went when she did. It's, it's a tragedy that is unfolding here, r realistically. I mean, many of us, and I count it as the majority, most Scots had the SNP's card marked long ago, but for some reason other, other people in other parts of Britain it, it viewed her differently, and it was aided and abetted hugely by the complicit mainstream media that pumped out miles of column inches and hours of television, suggesting that she was this, you know, giant political figure. You, I mean, Catherine Foster there was, was was echoing similar. You know, I mean, she, she was a big figure in Scottish politics. I don't know, in the same way that Mr. Blobby was a big figure on Saturday Night Television for those of us of a certain age. But it doesn't mean it was, doesn't mean Mr. Blobby was credible. Just big and loud and maybe colourful. Uh, but the point is that most of us, most of us up here knew that the SNP have never cared a jot for Scotland or for the people of Scotland. The, the shout for independence was cynical. It was just a tool that they were using to get what they wanted, which was power and money and influence, which is what they got. Uh, and hopefully, if there's any positive to come out of this at all, it's that it's that political pundits and, and commentators will look on and begin to perceive the SNP the way that I have and, and most of us have. And, and it's to say this in simple terms, the SNP, if the SNP was a person, it would be a weird, creepy person that was up to no good. It would be the kind of person that if they got on the late bus, you'd be praying that they would sit down beside somebody else and not you. And millions of us in Scotland have seen the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon and her cohort for that for years. But I mean, it reached a high watermark during the lockdown when the BBC in Scotland gave mm. Nicola Sturgeon live okay. television coverage every day okay. about what or, or political, her political machinations. You know, it was absolutely galling and sickening to watch. But here we are, you know, as you were rightly saying in your introduction, you know, the, the SNP have been exposed and it's at that ridiculous level, you know, where, <laughs> where people are speculating about where, a, a, where uh, speculating about where a, a mobile home has gone and yeah. when we will next hear from any of these clowns, be it Sturgeon, be it Murrell, be it Humza Yusuf. But for us living in Scotland, the reality is, you know, the, the TV pundits, they might as well be, you might as well be TV critics commentating on a soap opera up here because the SNP and Holyrood have no input whatsoever to the well-being of the people of Scotland. It's a joke and a bad it, joke and it's on us. It, so in a way it sounds like, Neil, it's frustrating for you when you hear so much talk about this sitcom that is this party and the individuals as opposed to the genuine political issues, social, economic, financial issues facing the Scottish people every day. So what are they? What is life like for Scottish people under the SNP? Well, you know, I grew up in a Scotland where, for example, to have been educated in Scotland, to have a Scottish education was something you could brag about. 
because a Scottish education was it, it stood up well in the league table of of educations that were available to you know to people around the world. That is gone. Uh, so to the you know the, the NHS in in Scotland is a disaster. Life expectancy in parts of Glasgow is lower than for somebody living in sub-Saharan Africa. Wow! You know the the crime and the rest of it, drugs deaths are a, a, an, an, an unenviable, incomparable high in Scotland. And I think I think quite honestly, what has happened with the SNP and in Holyrood and in Scotland is a microcosm for a much bigger problem, which is that politics in Britain, in the West, indeed is in a parlous state. You know, they, it let people glimpse the fact that what happened with the SNP was because they were only in it for what they could get out of it. And Westminster 2, on the bigger scale, is populated by more of the same. People that are just in that, they're just on the gravy train, they're just seeing what they can get out of it, and they're just in it for personal reward. And I would say, quite honestly, if you're asking me, that, that politics in Britain is dead at the moment. You know, and as I say, people calling themselves uh, who are political uh, uh, journalists, they might as well be TV critics uh, reviewing a soap, because in the same way that a soap has no meaning in the real world, neither do the machinations of those sock puppets, those empty, hollow individuals in Westminster. They have nothing to offer. And, you know, maybe what's happened, what's happening in Scotland with the SNP is just a glimpse that lets people see what a parlous state we're in with politics at the moment. If you're looking for solutions to Britain's problems in the political realm, then you're, you're you know, you might as well be looking under the bed. Neil, if I can ask you just very briefly, just because of pressure of time, Nicola Sturgeon said at the Edinburgh Festival that Boris Johnson was a national disgrace to the office of Prime Minister. What do you make of that remark? Well, what goes around comes around. I mean, she, she's a national disgrace to the people of Scotland. And all, all I can say, it is Pyrrhic. That is the word I would use. You know, if, if, this, if this is the death knell for the Scottish mm. National Party, if this is some kind of reckoning for Nicola Sturgeon and what she's been up to for the last dozen years, then, then so be it. But, you know, when you live here, when you have seen what has happened to this proud uh, country of Scotland uh, under the bailiwick of the SNP, then, you know, the, it, it's funny to watch from the outside, but if you live here, the joke's been on us. Yeah.